Hi, my name is Sebastian Matteau, and this is the second of a three-part video series about object-oriented programming in Python. Now, in the first video, we reviewed the basic terminology related to object-oriented programming, and I used a class called NumberList, uh, which I made myself, but I didn't actually show how I made that class NumberList. So that's what we're going to do in this video, to see, to get the basic idea of making your own class. Now, here I already have a little bit of code that doesn't work right now because we still need to define our number list class, um, but at least it explains how our number list class should work, right? So we're going to call it number list and it should accept an arbitrary, num uh, an arbitrary number of numbers that will make up the list. Um, it doesn't need to be able to do much, but it needs to have a method, right? So a function that is part of the object called mean that gives the mean value of all the numbers and a property, so a value that's part of the object, um, that is called length, and it gives our number of numbers in the list, so in this case, five. Um, so how do we go about creating this class? We start by simply saying class, and then giving the name of the class, number list, up, and then a colon, so it's kind of like making a defining a function. Then the first thing that we need to do generally speaking, not always, but very often, is to find a so-called magic function called dunder init, and dunder being two underscores. So def underscore underscore init underscore underscore. What does this mean? Well, this is a function that is called automatically when, the, uh, when an instance of the class is created. So here we are creating an object, like an instance of the class number list. This will automatically call this magic init function. Sometimes people call it a constructor, although uh, purists might kind of object to calling this a constructor, but at least it's the first function that is called. Um, that function has a few arguments. There's always one argument that's called self. The first argument, self, refers to the object itself. In other words, the self will, will correspond to not to the class number list, but to the object that is currently being initialized, and that will call, be called self. Um, that we don't need to, that argument is always passed implicitly, right? So it's part of the method definition, but it, you don't see it when you actually call the, the functions. Then we can add more arguments. And those are the arguments that we actually pass when we create an object. In this case, what we do, we want to define our, our uh, object such, our class such, that we can pass an arbitrary number of numbers. And how can we do that? Well, we can say star numbers, what does this mean? Well, we can pass any number of arguments to this uh, and then they will all be packed into a list and that list will be called numbers. That's what this syntax means. It's not really related to object-oriented programming, but it's a nice tip anyway to begin with, right? So this num here, if we do this, the one, one, two, three, and five will become a list and that will be available as the numbers argument here in our uh, init function. What are we going to do? Well, we're not really going to do much. We're, oh, so we're just going to say self dot underscore data is numbers. Um, and what are we doing here? Well, self refers to the object itself that we're being, that we're creating an instance of. Then the underscore data will be a property or a field in that object. And the underscore indicates that um, it's just a naming convention saying that this is basically for internal use. External users of our number list class are not supposed to touch the, da the underscore data. They can if they want, but it's kind of impolite to do that. But it's for internal use. And we use that, that uh, property or that field to store the numbers uh, list that is passed onto it. That's it. That's the only initialization that we need to do in this case. Then we also need to define our mean method. How do we do that? Well, okay. We simply say def mean. So it's kind of like uh, defining a normal function, but again, it implicitly receives this self argument, right? Corresponding to the object itself. Um, and what does it return? Well, it needs to return up the mean statistics.mean self.data, right? So we store the numbers here and then we're going to get the mean of them. What is statistics.mean? Well, oh, I need to import that, import statistics, right? Statistics is a built-in uh, module, a module that's built part of the Python standard library, and it has a few statistics functions, such as mean. So this is our method. 
Then we also need to define our property length. Um, we can do that in a few ways. Um, what we could do is the cheapest way would be simply to say here self dot length uh, is len numbers. Um, this would work, right? So we create a field or a property. We actually don't use this underscore because now we are supposed to to expose this property to the external users right here, fibo.length. So it's not only for internal use. And we assign the number, the length of the numbers list to it. That would be fine. That would work actually. Let me run it just so that you can see that this will actually work. Up, run. You see it prints out mean 2.4 comes from this and length five uh, uh, comes from this, right? So that works. A slightly fancier way to make properties um, is to do the following. To actually make a method um, that calculates the mean, that calculates the length, and then we turn that method into a property. So it will goes like this. Length, up, return length self dot data. Now you see the problem here if I try to run this, right? Up, I get an error. Oh wait, it says length is the bound method number list, blah, 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 blah. So what happens here is that basically FIBO.length is not a value, but it corresponds to this method. What we can do is to say, this is a little bit advanced, but because it's very convenient, I will tell you anyway, I can use the add property decorator, put it before the length uh, uh, method. And what this will do is will, as soon as you ask for the length, so you say object FIBO.length, it will automatically call this uh, method and return the return value. So it will behave in exactly the same way as what I did before, say self.length equals the length of the numbers. Um, but it is slightly more fancy and it has the advantage of being able to have values that seem like they are sort of fixed values properties of the class, but they're actually calculated on the fly when you request them. I hope that makes some kind of sense. And I actually have another video uh, at the end of the, this, this playlist, I will put it at the end of the playlist, uh, that goes into more depth uh, when it comes to properties. All right, but let's uh, run this. And now you see how this works, right? 2.45. So what, what have we seen here? Well, we have an initialization function that is implicitly called uh, when we create an object. Um, we've seen that the self argument is always implicitly passed to all the, all the methods that are part of, 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 of an object. Um, and we've seen that we can implement methods like this mean and that we can implement properties. And using the add property decorator has the effect that basically the, the, the length method is implicitly called just when we refer to its name, so to say. All right, um, in the next video, we're going to take a look at how we can uh, implement a class that actually inherits functionality from other classes. And that's, that goes a little bit already into the real core of object-oriented programming. All right, thank you very much for watching.